I also would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of the PS in the um, Ministry of ICT, Abona uh, Jerome Ching. Asante sana for joining us uh, this morning as we get to launch uh, this uh, East Africa Gone Talent powered by Safaricom. So we're going to move uh, pretty fast and um, I think we're going to have a panel discussion, maybe just to understand what it's all about. Um, we get the premise behind the idea and uh, you'll also get a chance to ask all the questions that you want. And before we uh, call our panelists up, I just want you to turn your attention to the screen for this uh, brief video on what uh, it's all about. What is Got Talent? Welcome to America's Got Talent. Britain's Got Talent. Australia's Got Talent. This is Bones, but I'm super talent. India's Got Talent. So I don't know what your talent is. I don't know what your talent is. Um, uh, as you saw earlier on the team that was here, you could be dancing, you could be singing, you could be an acrobat, uh, you could be uh, you know, playing the guitar, you could be playing an instrument, whatever talent you have, this is what it's all about. But I don't want to preempt anybody's um, uh, address uh, this morning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call up uh, our panelists. I'll start off, of course, with uh, Bona Joseph Kus uh, Kusaga, CEO Clouds Media International. If you can come and join me here on stage. Uh, Lee Ndaisaba, executive producer, East Africa Got Talent. Uh, Lilias Bode, producer, Rapid Blue. Uh, can see me, uh, my uh, soon to uh, be girlfriend and host of the East Africa Got Talent, and also Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, MBS, CEO of Kenya Film Commission, uh, film, uh, Kenya Film Classification Board, uh, Karibu Sana. So, we're going to uh, just you know get to know what uh, Got Talent is all about, and I'm going to just to ask a couple of questions, and of course, I'll let it uh, to you in a short while also if you have any questions or clarifications that you need. So uh, let me start with Bona Lee. Uh, I mean, Got Talent, just to give us an overview, what is it about? Um, good morning. Um, thank you so much. Uh, all protocol observed, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're very glad to be in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, the home of uh, talent, naturally. So Go Talent is uh, one of the old, um, oldest uh, formats for TV that has become international sensation across the world. We've been looking at uh, how the trains in the world go. So first of all, Go Talent is a platform to tell your story. You don't have to speak, but it's a platform for you to tell your story. When you looked at it and said, yes, we've been complaining that we don't tell our stories or somebody else tells our story and say maybe it's our chance to let everybody express themselves verbally or otherwise. Go Talent is a platform that creates uh, uh, new sensations across the world. Just so, so that you understand, um, imagine a four-year-old becoming a world um, champion as a DJ. Very unheard of before. Now it's possible. With all the other platforms like the internet and what have you, uh, getting the global eyeballs is no longer about geographical size or the size of the country of the population. Go Talent transcends all the borders. So it's Thank not you. about limitation to any particular genre. It's no. basically anything you can do that will wow the world. Correct. I can actually even play music, you know, with, with, with my hands. So long as it's uh, appealing to the crowd, that's talent. You see, um, I always believe that uh, when it comes to talent, it's basically that small thing that makes you stand out. That small thing that... Uh, um, Probably people will think it's a miracle or magic or anything. It could be anything. Whatever that entertains other people, uh, whatever that makes your name stand out, that is talent. Okay. Yes. Just a reminder that uh, the hashtag we are using today for this is uh, EAGT, uh, powered by Safaricom. Uh, East Africa Got Talent, powered by Safaricom. Uh, you can share the stories. Uh, let me just go to um, talking about matters of the format of this particular show. Uh, maybe uh, Miss Lilia's body to uh, tell us about the format. What format are we looking at? Um. 
So I think you're all very familiar with Got Talent from having seen America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent. Um, basically, just to give you a very quick overview of the process of the production is that it, it's in three phases. The first phase we call pre-auditions, that's when we get the big crowds, and then the next two phases are the theater auditions and then the, the grand finals, which are live broadcasts. So um, a, a contestant goes through actually three grueling processes before they get to the final. Um, the Theatre auditions we're going to be filming at the University of Nairobi Theatre, I'm sure you all know it, which is a very beautiful venue. Um, and really the thing that that is closest to our hearts about Got Talent, Rapid Blue have done eight seasons in South Africa, so we're very familiar with the show. It really does transform lives. Got Talent transform li transforms lives. So somebody who comes onto this platform um, with a talent, and as Lee says, the talents have no boundaries. So it's any age, even if you're three, even if you're 93. Um, but the Got Talent experience will transform your life in some way. Um, and that's what, what we find is very exciting about the show. And we're absolutely certain that we're going to find fantastic talent in East Africa. And we really are looking forward to working with East Africans to bring out that talent and produce 10 weeks of really thrilling television viewing. So you heard it. You. Um, uh, it's about Got Talent. doesn't matter what age. You can be as young as three, uh, as old as 90. So long as you've got talent, put it on stage. But of course, uh, we might have be, uh, be able to uh, you know, put some limitations on the kind of talent that we're talking about. Because if um, it's clean talent, then that's talent definitely that we can uh, screen and project uh, for everybody to see. And here, we, uh, this is the moment I'd like to uh, bring in a gentleman um, in these circles we call the moral police. I don't know why we call him that, but it's just you know, uh, talking about clean talent, consumable talent. And uh, maybe, you know, just as a recap too, because I think most people know exactly what you uh, uh, advocate for. Must talent, you know, push the boundaries for it to be consumable? Because I think we're talking about God's talent. There's talent that we can actually harness, but that talent also must be consumable for the larger viewing. Uh, Dr. Mutua. Uh, thank you. I think pushing boundaries is a good thing because creativity is about that. You know, expressing yourself in new ways, uh, pushing the boundaries, and trying to find new and creative ways of entertaining. I think it's a good thing. But uh, from where I stand as a regulator is that it has to be within certain cultural and moral uh, paradigm to ensure, uh, particularly, that one, comedy, art in general, promotes our culture and our values, but more importantly, we protect children from premature exposure to harmful content or to adult content, because that's, a, that's our concern, the children, what they're watching. And uh, I always say, it doesn't have to be dirty to sell. Yeah. You don't have to be dirty or obscene to be funny. I think Anne here, she has more fans in Kenya, <laughs> and uh, she does not define herself that way. Uh, you know, she's not loved because she's uh, obscene. Dirty, yeah. She's loved because she's funny, and she's funny in a nice way, yeah. that we can sit together as a family and watch Anne Kansime. And I think that's a good thing, yeah. because where the market is, is the family. The fact that I can sit together with my 10-year-old son, with my wife, with my grandmother, with my mother-in-law, and my neighbors, and watch Anne, and we laugh even when she's uh, trying to bust her husband, but within paradigms. So you can be creative, you can expand the boundaries, but it doesn't have to be dirty to sell. And I wanted to use, again, what uh, Safaricom is doing. Because if you look at the, where there's money for musicians, for example, here in Kenya, and I'm sure it's the same world over, it's actually, uh, in Kenya it is in Skiza tunes. And I was surprised to see the statistics the other day that almost, I think, out of 20 top Skiza tunes, 18 are gospel, and I'm not saying people must sing gospel, but what tells you is that people want clean content that we can watch together as a family. The drunk who is crawling from a bar, they don't want their kids to watch bad things. They don't want their kids to watch pornography. They want their kids to come up, to, to be brought up in a morally upright manner. So essentially, yeah. push the boundaries, think through, be funny as much as you want, uh, stretch it and, uh, and, and be creative. But be creative knowing that you don't create for yourself. You create content for consumers. And as a government and as a regulator, I'm concerned about the consumers, particularly children, so that they are not exposed to dirty language, to violence, 
to obscene stuff. So push the barriers, but stick within the moral paradigm. Stick within the paradigms, but if you are showing it on TV, there is a remedy to that, in that you can be, you can have adult products, but out of the watershed period. Yes. But between, within the watershed period, any program must be suitable for family viewing. I, I don't know if you've watched, um, um, uh, you know, you've got talent um, uh, series before for other countries. Um, do you think it fits the bill? It or does. or, or, it or does. do we have to wait until watershed for us to consume this? By the way, the reason we are here in a big way as government, and I'm so happy to see C as Amina and uh, my peers, Jerome, and, you know, there are many government officer, officers here. The, more, the reason we are welcoming co talent in such a big way is because it is a suitable product. It's a product that we embrace, it's a, suit, uh, it's a product that will promote talent, but promote it within. That we don't have to worry as government, as parents. We don't have to be worried yeah, yeah. what we, you are watching in Got Talent. Got Talent is the in thing. I think it's what we have been waiting for. Welcome to Kenya and to East Africa. This is your time. This is your you can, time. Yes, and you can set the agenda for clean content. Yes. You can set the agenda. I was telling Anne, artists who are established like ourselves, and there are many others, can be the ones to set the agenda. Uh, Anne is, Anne is very excited here. You know? Anne is very excited. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions in a short while because she's receiving all the praise and she's just waving. Um, uh, welcome. Uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Motura said, uh, that you know we love your content. Uh, we love you. Uh, I love you. <laughs> I told her uh, that, so <laughs> don't confuse her. Well, don't confuse her. Um, uh, let, let, let me bring in Anne. I mean, uh, as the host of this show, do you have any ex particular expectations of what you hope to draw out of this, what you hope to achieve, what you hope to see it become? Hi. Um, I thought I did till I saw what just happened here. I'm not ready. I, I thought I knew what we are going to see. You know, you see things on TV, in other God talents, and you're like, yo, that's a camera trick. Nothing like that can happen. But I saw people here suspending each other and we didn't have casualties. I saw someone there using his hands to walk. I don't know whether it's challenging God. Already what I'm seeing here in front of my eyes is showing me that I am not ready in a good way, that I'm going to be shocked. And I've been having a lot of inboxes in my social media platforms. And when someone wants to be like you, they are intent on knowing which steps you took to get to where you've been. They want yes. a platform. They want to be stars. And you don't know what to tell this person who likes you. And then they'll write you every month. So where are the lenses? I am telling you people, this is your time. Don't stop inboxing me. If you don't come for these auditions, I'll block you. The next time you ask me how to be a star, this is a platform that we are seeing with our eyes. Yes. And I'm here to tell you that I'll be welcoming you, encouraging you, and you better break a leg because we'll have an ambulance on standby <laughs> to organize you. We are going to embrace talent. I can't wait to be up. This is something, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Finally, it's, it's our time in East Africa yes. and of course the great talents um, across the board. But there's uh, a gentleman I'd like to bring into the conversation right now, uh, Bona Joseph Kusaga, the CEO of Clouds Media International. Uh, um, what's your passion with talent? First of all, let me ask, what is your talent? We, we hope maybe you can either do some somersaults, you know, juggle for us. <laughs> I can dance, I can sing. You're multi-talented. You can dance and you can multi -talented. sing. Multi-talented. <laughs> uh, you're multi-talented. Multi-talented. E.g., e <laughs> are, you, are you going to dance or sing for us? Well, if, they can clap the, the, if you can clap your hands for me, I can do that right now. Uh, I think you can sing, yeah? Let, let's let's sing. Let, let's sing a cappella. Okay, I'll do this. Just two sentences. <laughs> well, these auditions are individual auditions. You don't come, uh, you know, with the guy who's coming next. <laughs> you know, I thought he's gonna take the chorus. He didn't take the chorus. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay, but but in terms of uh, you know um, driving this, are, are you ready for this? Do, do you feel you're ready for this? Um, what are your expectations for, for, for this uh, particular East Africa talent? I'll tell you one thing. Um, it's just like a dream comes true today. We've been struggling to bring East Africa Got Talent for the past three years. But a lot has been happening in between when the analog, we cut off the analog, we went into digital, so things fall apart. But uh, we've done so much in Tanzania in terms of entertainment. I started my business when I was 17 years old. I had, I had my first nightclub when I was 21 years old. I had my first radio station when I was 25 years old. And we are celebrating 20 years right now. All because of uh, nurturing talents and making sure that we give platform for, for the I am so ready for this.
so ready for this. Of course you are ready. I mean you had the first nightclub at the age of 21. <laughs> at the age of 21 some of us were struggling to skip the fence to go nightclubbing. <laughs> so definitely uh, go to his club. Uh, definitely you seem very ready. Um, maybe just before, before I go back to Lee, uh, just uh, I can see me. You are a brand. Uh, you are a brand. You are renowned you know, within the region and of course within the continent. Uh, some people want to be like you, as you say, people inboxing you how to be like you. You know how it, what it means to manage a brand. The people who are going to be auditioning, there is something further than just auditioning because you might not eventually be, be the eventual winner, but you can brand yourself that somebody else picks the content that you have. Tell us a bit about, uh, about um, uh, branding. I, th um, I think I've been intent right from the beginning. I wanted to be able to appeal to everyone. I didn't want the children to love me alone. I didn't want the teenagers to love me alone. So my brand being strong and going as wide as it has online, I blame YouTube. It really circulated me too much. But for me to be able to appeal to, I, I, I was intent on content that, like he said, where the whole village will sit under a tree and watch in a small TV and high five each other and learn something. So I've only been intentional in entertaining people in the ways that actually matter. Talk about the things that they can identify with. I want to be able to entertain you and you leave, you don't know whether to be happy or nod your head or go and change your ways. You know, so I've been just intent. That's the brand I've been wanting to build since I started performing. So create your plan, follow through the plan and build your brand and stick to it. Good message. Uh, Bonali, why this particular format? Um, I mean, uh, we, we had um, uh, Lila's body talk, uh, talk about the format, you know, the grueling uh, eight to ten weeks of the auditions. Uh, but why did you decide to, you know, bring this particular format here in East Africa? Well, thank you. Uh, th there are so many um, reasons. But let me just uh, focus on two main ones. Uh, one is... Uh, there has been a notion, uh, right or wrong, there's been a notion that some things have to be uh, a lot of obscenity for them to get viral, to become very popular, and what have you. It's a wrong notion. And I'll tell you another thing that happened to us uh, for the last two years. So many people saying, is there a talent in East Africa? We know Diamond, we know Kansime, we know Eric Omondi, we know all these guys. But it's just, a, uh, is there anything else to, to, to find out? So as uh, Lilias mentioned rightly, we're on a journey to discover. We are going across East Africa to discover what else is there that we have been suppressing for so long. And while at it, and thank you so much uh, Safaricom uh, for being part, part of this, uh, I think we share a vision of transforming lives. So we hope that while we're on the journey of discovery, we can be able to also transform live, lives. So why go talent? First, the entire family appeal. As she rightly said, you talk about a, a three-year-old to a 93-year-old. It's not an easy thing to bring on TV at, uh, together at the same time. Uh, and then the second thing is, okay, so you've got good content, clean content, appealing content on TV. This is a show that five years ago got the, uh, uh, got the uh, Guinness Book of Records for the most viewed show in the world. That is interesting. There's a reason why when you go to China, when this show does not have a language. And that's why we are saying, you don't have to speak English to be part of this. It's you a global come. show. Yes, it is a global show. So being able to pull the whole family to watch the show on a Sunday evening at the same time going out and telling people this could be your chance. So that's what we've been looking for and uh, we found it in Go Talent. So this is your time, this is your show, it's a global show, so whatever you're going to be putting out during the auditions, make sure it at least represents um, uh, you, um, because you're talking in the Kenyan context, uh, the best of Kenya, and uh, we're going to be giving you details on how you can actually do that in a short while. Uh, but let me just bring in uh, Mrs. Lilius, in, in, in terms of uh, the show, I mean, you've done it down south. Um, in this particular region, uh, are we expecting any surprises, um, anything different, anything new? Well, as Kanseme says, the, the dances that we just saw were, I think they're the winners already. Um, yeah, I think, I think we always hope to find something new, to find something exciting. And somehow or other, that always happens with Got Talent. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It stimulates people. Um, and people that thought they could maybe do this, they could maybe do that, suddenly they, they think, yes. I can, and they enter into God Talent, and, and really we get the most amazing results and, and the most interesting, diverse, cult and diversely cultural experiences that come out. So, yeah, to answer your question, we're very sure we're going to be finding and discovering some new amazing talent. Amazing talent, not just singing. Don't limit yourself to singing because you've been in that space. There's just so much talent to be discovered out there. And um, 
as, as we heard from uh, Dr. Uh, Zekli Mutua, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, stamp of authority, do we have that uh, stamp of approval for uh, this particular show that, you know, we are good in the East African region, let's go. And uh, if you have any particular talents, I think we, we need to ask him this. Apart from, you know, telling us, you know, online that, you know, please don't go beyond certain limits. We want to know what his talents are as well. He might be the next, uh, you know, uh, Justin Bieber, maybe just a bit older. <laughs> I am actually a very good singer. Uh, okay, l l let him sing for us. Uh, what is your favorite song? Don't challenge me to that. <laughs> <laughs> but let me say this. Uh, I, 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 th I think if you're talking about talent, uh, and you're in Kenya, you're in the right place. Yeah. This is the home of Lupita Nyong'o, this is the home of, uh, this is the home of m -Pesa. <laughs> This is the place where technology has been embraced and we are, yes. we are very uh, blessed to have uh, the PS4 ICT and innovations here with us. Mm -hmm. uh, the digital migration opened a new spectrum for uh, uh, content distribution. Yes. It's no longer just on TV. This is big because Kenya has embraced technology and our young people, 70% mm -hmm. of, of our population is actually below that five. They are so innovative, mm -hmm. they are so creative, and if you wanted to get uh, to push content online, this is the place you begin. I think uh, we are the market leaders in terms of that. But look at it also in terms of the East African region, that bringing East Africa got talent yeah, uh, opens the market, not just to Kenya, but to the numbers. I believe the reason why Nollywood is now, I think it's the third uh, highest contributor to yes. the GDP of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And basically, Nigeria took advantage of their numbers, their population. First of all, China is doing the same. Yeah. And if you look at the innovations that are coming from those countries in Nigeria, uh, Jack Ma with, uh, uh, you know, Alibaba and so on and so forth, it shows you that the market is going online. Number two, the most talented, the most, the richest people in the world today, talent. even if you were to go by the Forbes magazine, you know, before it used to be real estate, the likes of President Donald Trump and yeah. others, now they are, they are no longer in the Randa. The richest people are either in the innovative, in the creative industry or in uh, sports. And I think we need now to look at this as a frontier for job creation. Yes. Here in Kenya, we have embraced something as government called the Big Four Agenda. And we are saying talent can become the frontier mm -hmm. where our people are getting jobs and are making wealth. But there's something you ask Zimmer that I think is important you need to add. Not just managing the brand, but managing success when it comes. Yes. Because a lot of our young people get to success and they become one hit wonder. And after that you don't see much because they don't know. So I think as you do this, please also let us embrace uh, mentorship so that they know you don't have to go be suck the moment you test success. That you can be successful, but still be modest and become a role model. Yes, yes. Uh, now to get to the gentleman who is supposed to put uh, you know all, all this together, uh, Bonajok Saga once again. Um, you know what does this mean for for cloud media? What does it mean for you? And what does the next couple of weeks look like for you? Um, again, as I said, uh, clouds is there to open doors for the talent in Africa. And we're really looking forward to see how we can, we can do our level best to see we have platforms across East Africa to give our youth platforms where they can definitely showcase what they can do. So in these two weeks, uh, together with my team, I think we are building uh, sets and everything. But we believe this will be the biggest platform in East Africa where we'll definitely see a lot, a lot of talents in East Africa. East Africa is blessed with talents. You see, it's blessed with talents. They only need a platform where they can showcase what they can do. And this is a platform for them. And we, we, tr we trust us, we're going to do it, we're going to make sure that, that, that the platform is used properly for the youth of uh, East Africa. Fantastic. Um, maybe just to wind up uh, with Lee, uh, I, I know it's going to be, I mean, now we just hit the ground running. Uh, after this, after today, uh, what next? Well, what next? Uh, first of all, uh, being here in this room, and this would surprise you, but uh, um, as we sit here on this stage, there's actually a person from each of the four countries that we will be representing during God Talent. There's a Rwandese, there's a Ugandan, there's a Kenyan, there's a Tanzanian. That would interest you. So that tells you how how that uh, th this brings together as a, as, as a one people. And as uh, Joseph just rightly said, uh, what we are looking for is not just the platform. What we are looking for is to remove um, uh, what we would otherwise call borders because our youth need to work together more. Yes. And I'm very thankful for Kenya uh, for embracing us with a very open heart. I'm very thankful for like-minded people. Uh, Safaricom PLC were the first people to say yes 
Let's go. Tuaweza. Let's go. Let's transform lives together. So I think this is uh, the start of the journey. But as I said earlier, uh, we are on a journey of discovery. And I hope to keep you around uh, to discover with us. Thank you. Uh, definitely. Yeah. We are going to be discovering with them. Please, let's give a round of applause. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be taking questions uh, from uh, you uh, in a short while. So uh, maybe if you can uh, just uh, you know, go back to your seats. We'll be taking some uh, questions later on. Uh, right now, just to... Um, also acknowledge uh, the presence uh, of the Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of uh, Sports, uh, Culture and Heritage, Ambassador Amina Mohammed. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, I think I'm going to invite them actually to come and give us um, you know, their, their remarks. And I'll start off uh, with the, the Chief Customer Officer at Safaricom PLC, um, uh, Madam Silvia Mulenge. And of course, you know Safaricom. They've been at the storm center of anything that is discovering talent for quite a while, whether it's music, whether it's the arts, uh, whether it's photography. They've been there. And it's about transforming lives. You had Lee talking about matters of transforming lives. And this is one of those. Uh, projects that definitely, definitely will transform lives. Um, they've been there in sports, you name it. I mean, even right now, it's actually ongoing. And once again, they, you know, jump onto the next, um, uh, the next project because it's about transforming lives. So please put your hands together uh, to Madam Sylvia Mulinge as she comes up uh, to give her address. Karibu sana. Um, hmm? Are you excited? Uh, or the media don't get excited? <laughs> You've seen everything. Anyway, all protocols are observed. The pre, uh, very special appreciation to Ambassador Amina Mohammed, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Sports and Culture, uh, and everyone else, all the other distinguished guests who are here today, uh, to be able to see us um, together with uh, Clouds Media unveil this partnership. Today is a great day. Um, it's a great day because it actually speaks of a great opportunity that has been brought here to East Africa. Thank you so much to Clouds Media, who are the owners and the holders of uh, this East African franchise, who have given us an opportunity to be able to participate. As uh, has been rightly said uh, before, East Africa Go Talent is all about transforming lives, which is truly the vision that drives uh, Safaricom. And I think there's no better platform to be able to showcase uh, what Kenya can be able to offer and East Africa can be able to offer at large. Um, this is a, is a fantastic opportunity for us to be able to show uh, what we are made of. You know, I was reflecting uh, with the team the other day when we were considering this and saying that, you know, we've seen a lot of Kenyans who have been exposed on different platforms uh, of God talent across the world. So it's the right time for this to be able to come to Kenya and to East Africa for us to be able to show what we can be able to do uh, with our own. Uh, for Safaricom, um, anything that has to do with youth, anything that has to do with celebrating uh, Kenyan culture is something that we will always uh, want to be a part of because it truly celebrates um, why we as why we are uh, as Kenyans. There's a lot of work that we have done with our young people on the Blaze platform. Uh, there's a lot of assets that we've actually invested in. Uh, for example, Chapadimba. I was in Mombasa over the weekend on uh, Saturday and Sunday where we hosted uh, the Chapadimba tournament um, in Mombasa at Bomu Stadium. And it was filled to capacity. And, we, and you actually see the potential that our young people have. Um, it, it therefore uh, behoves us to ensure that we as a brand continue to support uh, such initiatives. So today we are really privileged and are very excited to be part uh, of the sponsorship of this iconic show, which as we have seen uh, in the videos that have been shown earlier is the world's biggest uh, reality show. And I think the fact that it brings the family from a three year old, as we've been told by Lee, to a 90 year old, and everyone can actually be able to laugh and enjoy and celebrate uh, the talent that we have is fantastic for us as a country. Safaricom uh, celebrated its 18 year, year birthday uh, last year and the, one of the commitments that we made is that we would continue to be with our customers and we captured this commitment in the in the statement of Nawe Kilawakati. What we have sought to do um, in the various journeys that we've worked with our customers is to continue to just re-emphasize to them that whatever state that they find themselves in life, whether it's the young people or it's the old people, middle class, those who are working, those who are not working, the Safaricom is going to be that partner that will be working with them on that journey. We are excited because this is another opportunity that we have as a company to continue to celebrate our young people who we are very uh, passionate about 
about. The Blaze Network that you've created for the youth uh, seeks to support the youth on their unconventional journeys to success and encouraging them to, um, to leverage on their creative talents and turn them into something uh, meaningful. When we have seen the showcase of talent that has been displayed here by Sarakasi, um, I was trying to figure out um, if, if 10 years from now on, if the guys who are actually here showcasing the talent would be able to pull it off. But the young people, because of the advantage that they have on, in, on age, the advantage that they have in terms of flexibility, I guess, with their bodies, can be able to actually be very creative. So what we ask ourselves is, if, if a young person cannot be able to to get a job in the formal sector. What then can we be able to do uh, with them? How can we be able to work alongside them so that they can be able to turn whatever talent they have, whether it's a talent in agriculture, whether it's a talent in dancing, whether it's a talent in DJing, whether it's an, a talent in artistry, how can we actually be able to, to work with them to help them turn that talent that they have uh, into a profit and be able to support their communities? But we don't only look at this. We have partnered with organizations like the Young Scientists of Kenya, uh, where we've collaborated again together with the Kenyan government. And this uh, Young Scientist of Kenya is a unique platform where young people across Kenya get to demonstrate and showcase their scientific talents. We have also worked with local sportsmen and women on different platforms to develop their talents and helping them to gain recognition for the same and earn a decent living for it. It was a true celebration this weekend uh, when we saw one of our young people, his name is uh, David Majak, who is he's a young refugee from Pokot that we discovered last year. Uh, during the Chapadimba uh, tournament. He ended up being one of the star players uh, for Kapenguria Heroes, the team that won season one, and who we were able to take uh, to the UK to actually see um, the English Premier League, which really motivated them. David was then um, selected to play for the Kenya Premier League side, uh, Tasca FC, and this weekend he scored his first goal. Now, the story of David, it's a story of many other young people. And that's why when we say that the, this vision that we have of transforming lives, not just a, a vision that is on a piece of paper, David now has an opportunity to be able to turn around his own livelihood, but not only his own, but also the people uh, in the community that he comes from, from Pokot, simply uh, from the celebration of the talent that he has in football. So for us, um, this continues then to motivate us. And we don't only uh, do this. Um, uh, for, for, for those who are able, but we have also partnered uh, with even those who are differently able. Uh, the other day, we also partnered again uh, with the government of Kenya uh, to take a team for the Special Olympics in Dubai, and I think they came back uh, with several gold awards, which was a big celebration. We have also sponsored um, the Kenya Riders Association and giving uh, the deaf athletes a platform to be able to showcase their talent through the Deaf Athletes Association of Kenya. We have also supported arts. Um, just the other day, we launched the Safaricom uh, calendar. And um, the Safaricom calendar is a showcase of uh, Kenyan art. And we have given local artists a platform to be able to gain the recognition that they rightfully deserve. So for us, there's a lot that we will continue to do in the art and uh, cultural space, as well as sports, because that's, this is what uh, uniquely make, makes us Kenyan. On the music side, I, I, I don't think I need to reiterate everything that we've done uh, from Safaricom Jazz Festival to the Traweza Live that we ran last year, which really recognized a lot of our young talent that we have across the country, gave them an opportunity to be seen. And now, uh, via the Skiza platform uh, that Dr. Mutua referenced to earlier, they can actually now be able to commercialize uh, their talent and also uh, begin to, be, uh, to earn from them. On the Traweza Live platform, we've discovered gifted musicians, DJs, hype masters who got an opportunity to be able to stage, uh, grace our stage alongside well other established artists and make a name for themselves. 
Ladies and gentlemen, um, the brand promise of uh, Nawe Kila Wakati is a commitment to our customers that will continue to follow them wherever they are. The reason why we are quite excited by this partnership is that it gives us an opportunity to be able to go beyond the borders of Kenya um, and be able to interact with our consumers um, or even our fans uh, who are in uh, Tanzania, uh, Uganda and uh, Rwanda, especially on one of, uh, I guess, Kenya's proudest exports, uh, which is M-Pesa. With M-Pesa Global, our, all the citizens of the four different countries can actually be able to interact on a mobile money platform. Um, they can be able to go onto a global marketplace and be able to send money to each other. We have actually uh, worked out partnerships in the four different countries that will allow our customers in the four countries to be able to transfer money seamlessly uh, without any hassle in the countries of Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. So we believe that this platform will also give us an ability to be able to showcase the power of M-Pesa and how we are connecting uh, the region seamlessly. We are quite excited uh, because um, the East Africa Got Talent is also another opportunity to be able to give our entertainment and uh, industry an opportunity to be able to be seen, uh, to be heard, to be able to show what it is that we can be able uh, to showcase to the world. Content um, is king. Um, I have a friend who likes to say that uh, content is king and video is King Kong. And I believe that uh, the, the East Africa Got Talent will create a big opportunity as consumer said, for a lot of the um, local talent that we have here to actually be seen uh, within the region and actually get uh, themselves promoted and known. For us, uh, this partnership will be a multi-platform partnership that will feature on air, digital, as well as social integrations. And the plan that we have is to create innovative content that will reach consumers at every single point. The promise that we have to all our customers uh, uh, Safaricom customers, as well as those who are not Safaricom, is that we will give them engaging and exclusive content behind access, um, behind scenes access uh, to fans uh, throughout the series. And I think also with the $500,000 up for grabs, this is an opportunity for Kenyans to demonstrate their talents to the whole of East Africa and ultimately uh, transform their lives. So I would really like to encourage um, our young people, our old people, Kenyans of all, of all uh, shapes, sizes from all uh, different backgrounds to turn up for the auditions. Um, I think we'll be given the dates of the auditions, but I believe they're happening around the 11th and 12th of May, and they're going to be held in the KICC. Um, East Africa Go Talent has a Facebook page uh, where everyone will be invited to do, I guess, a one-minute clip, uh, post it on their page, um, and fill out uh, some paperwork on the form, uh, which will also be submitted via the same channel. And then after that, then um, this um, the East Africa Go Talent will then get in touch with you to be able to let you know that you've actually gotten a chance to be able to come for the auditions. So we encourage you all to turn up in large numbers, uh, not only for the opportunity to be seen, but also for a chance uh, to be able to win uh, the money. I believe that following the success that we've seen in America, in Britain, and all the other countries where Got Talent um, has had an opportunity to be able to uh, showcase itself, that East, this, this show will have a big impact um, in East Africa uh, and on the entertainment industry at large in Kenya, in Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. Um, one sign, obviously, of a healthy nation is the ability for us to be able to preserve our culture, to conserve our history and our heritage while developing new expressions for, for the current times. And I believe that with the hotbed of talent that you currently have in Kenya, um, and uh, knowing that this is also one of the key things that is important for the governments, that it's a fantastic platform for a lot of public and private institutions to be able to come in and continue to invest in music, sports, and culture to drive our nation forward. At Safaricom, we like to say that when we come together, we make great things happen. So we continue to hope that we'll work with the government uh, through the relevant ministry to create an enabling environment for the development of cultural industries in line with the overall economic development of Kenya. I believe that when the public and private sector come together, we can be able to create an even more favorable environment that will allow artists and entrepreneurs to thrive, which will in turn strengthen the economy and uh, the nation in the long run. 
So we invite you all to come and participate. We invite you to come and have fun. Uh, we can't wait for the auditions to kick off and then the live auditions are also going to be happening in Kenya. I really want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Kusaga together with the Rapid Blue team for choosing Kenya as an anchor country to be able to showcase uh, this. As you've heard, the live auditions are going to be happening in Kenya. So there's also a big opportunity for people to actually come into the live auditions and actually experience the environment that you'll see. The fact that we have uh, Rapid Blue in the room means that the quality of the show will be as the same standard as we've seen globally, which I think is also of another fantastic platform for the country to be seen and for us to celebrate Kenyans at large. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to a fantastic show. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sylvia, for that. Let's give another round of applause. Um, it is now my pleasure to invite uh, the, the PS uh, in the Ministry, uh, in the State Department of ICT, uh, on behalf of uh, the CS in uh, ICT, could not make it this morning, uh, PS uh, Jerome uh, Ochin, to come and give his address. Karibu sana. Thank you. Asante. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, looks like uh, the sugar levels have gone down. Eh? I understand it's lunchtime. Unfortunately, the program has gone beyond lunchtime. Good afternoon. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, like it's been said, uh, initially we were expecting uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Joe Mosheru, to be with us, but uh, due to exigency of duty, he's been called to another assignment, so he's not able to be with us. But he has sent an able representative to be with you. Uh, to the Cabinet Secretary for Sports and uh, Heritage, Ambassador Amina Mohammed. To the CEO, Kenya Film Classification Board, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. To the Chief Customer Officer at Safaricom, Sylvia Mulinge. CEO, Cloud Media International, Joseph Kusaga, Executive Producer East Africa Got Talent, Lee Ndaisaba, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. First of all, allow me to commend the Kenya Film Classification Board and Cloud Media International for coming up with this initiative that will see East Africa Got Talent hosted in Kenya. The production will give Kenyan youths an opportunity to display various talents in diverse fields and expose them to the international market. As a ministry, we recognize the fact that creative industries are a source of untapped potential of economic growth across Africa. Just to echo the sentiment expressed by all our colleagues here, really there is a lot of talent within ourselves and within our communities. And we saw it right from uh, the display we had in the opening session, that really there is a lot of talent. And youths, our youth should not actually cry about an opportunity for employment that the creative industry provides an enormous opportunity for self-employment. And we should no longer be crying about unemployment because I think our perception about employment has always been the white collar job. But actually, there is a lot of space, there is a lot of opportunities in the creative industry, and we can solve this problem of unemployment through such initiatives because Africa Got Talent, like we've, has been mentioned, gives us an opportunity for discovery, that people have an opportunity to discover the talents they have. And I must say that the present kind of parent, I remember when we were growing up, if I ever told my parent that I wanted to go and study art, they would be like, seriously, 
because the impression of employment was either you be a doctor, you be a, a, a pilot, you be a, a, a teacher, those known profession. That to them was the only thing that you would study in the university. Right now, the parent of today really appreciate uh, the potentials that we have in talent-based activities. That actually, you can still study, yes, but again, at some point, you say, now, me, I only want to focus on soccer. And soccer is paying. I only want to focus on film. Film is paying. You, we have an evidence, like our Lupita Nyong'o, many other of us in the so-called profession cannot make the kind of money that the, uh, uh, Lupita Nyong'o is making through her talents. So basically, I appreciate that we, there, there has been a paradigm shift that the parents of today recognize talent. Therefore, God talent gives us an opportunity for us to discover and rediscover our talents. Therefore, we should not really be struggling with the problem of unemployment. It is a high time, therefore, that we must come together and start considering non-traditional strategies of creative art in our national development plan to conquer the high rate of unemployment. Creative and cultural industries such as fashion, film, television, music, among others, which have always been overlooked in the past, are potential and legitimate avenues that can be used to create employment. Our youth are a natural, uh, a natural resource that we can tap in order to create and accelerate economic growth, create jobs, and conquer poverty, especially in, in a country like ours, where by the median age, actually, is 19 years. According to statistics from PwC, by 2022, the creative industry in Kenya is projected to be worth 325 billion. There is the growing realization that the creative and cultural aspirations of citizens beyond the essentials of food, shelter, and health have not yet been met. A film industry that embraces its country youth as a readily available resource for film, making space for the country on the global map as a key tourism and film destination. It's for this reason that actually we had invited or we have in this particular forum representative from the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Tourism, and even the Ministry of ICT, where uh, the Kenya Film Classification uh, is resident. As government, we have adopted what we call a multi-agency approach in trying to address issues that we no longer operate in silos, that ministries come together, put we normally put our heads together to resolve an issue. So actually, the presence and the uh, invitation of the Ministry of Culture together with the Ministry of Tourism and even the Ministry of Technology uh, is not a coincidence. It is really a strategy that we are using to come together and address issues that affect us. Beyond the multi-agency approach, we now bring in the private and public uh, uh, private partnership. So as government, again, we acknowledge and we really embrace the role the private sector is uh, participating or is doing in the building of our economy. To further demonstrate our commitment as government towards this industry, the ministry is working with stakeholders to develop a film policy. Through this policy, we seek to encourage public-private partnership in the area of film in Kenya, and also establish a national film fund for financial and tax credits, rebates, and other incentives for the film uh, industry. Again, it is only through partnership that we are going to take this industry to the highest and to the heights it deserved. I would like to thank the Kenya Film Classification Board, the Kenya Film Commission, and the Kenya Film School for signing a tripartite memorandum of understanding, which is meant to embolden 
the cooperation further and hasten the development of the film industry in this country. Uh, I would want to really appreciate the effort the Kenya Film uh, Classification Board has taken to actually be the lead in this initiative and it is very important, like I said, that these agencies work together because the Kenya Film School also brings on board the necessary human capital that we require in the film industry. So I really applaud uh, Bonamutu and your team for having realized the need to come together and work as a team. And you all, I mean, you know very well, this has always been uh, very key to my heart. I've always been looking for an opportunity and asking you guys, when do we work together? And I'm happy the time has come that we have put our heads together and we are now working as a team, it is, I mean, regardless of the various uh, statutes that uh, uh, forms us. We're also looking to, or we're also working to establish a film city or media city, which will have all the facilities required for filmmaking. It will comprise of several studios, sets, backlots, a wide range of production and post-production facilities that can accommodate several film and television productions simultaneously. The coverage of the creative industry with other sectors such as tourism, culture, sports, and ICT nurtures skills and builds capacity which is a fundamental block for economic development and job creation. The crossover between digital technology and social entrepreneurship has created the need to connect agendas and to explore film as a basic and a common medium of communication. We have laid a lot of emphasis and said, let us tell our own story. Let us build capacity of the industry within ourselves to be able to tell our own story. The rapidly expanding digital space and the ever-growing population demands for local content that tells authentic Kenyan stories on a Kenyan platform and on Kenyan terms. East Africa Got Talent is aimed at creating a market and a platform for Kenyan to shape its narrative and claim its space in the global market. You realize the coming together of even the East African community. We're already talking about a population of close to 200 million. This is in itself a market that can actually help in the growth of the industry. Kenya is currently one of the world's creative and entrepreneurial hotspots when it comes to utilization of new technology and platform with a lot to share with the world. I therefore call, call upon filmmakers to embrace the country's film locations, which are undeniably the best in the world, to create films that take us to the world and bring us to the world. You may have heard about the upcoming film called Tolo Tolo, which will be released later this year. The film was shot in Malindi, and the star cast is Nasir Said Biria, a class four pupil at primary school in Malindi. This demonstrates that Kenya is indeed the perfect film destination, blessed with talents and enabling environment for film. With a majority of youth demographics, it is unsurprising that the creative economy process growing in the world, creating the need for, to, for us to focus on skills and investments that will ensure that the film market is both locally and in, internationally. An investment such as East Africa got into the country's creative industry as it provides an invaluable platform for the artists their creativity and from their craft plug into the economy through the creation of content and exploits the talent among the youth as a film resource while at the same time stimulating economic growth and creating uh, employment opportunities. With those many remarks, I don't want to say there are few, eh? people normally say there are few, but mine are many.
I declare. With those many remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much.